States, States of America, America and to the republic for whose kingdom it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, let's pray. Your Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you, God, for the people that are here today, Lord, and, and God, you are the first, first and foremost in our minds. Lord, you gave us the wonderful country that we have. And God, the way we look at it, we're simply trying to preserve and defend the country that you've given us. God, the freedom of religion, the freedom of speech, the freedom to carry arms, to protect ourselves, to protect our families. God, that's why we're here today. We're trying to do the right thing, trying to head the right direction. Lord, I pray that you would give us all uh, wisdom, Lord, and guidance, that you would bless our effort, Lord. God, there's no doubt about it. We are in the right, Lord, and simply defending what you've given us. Lord, help us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, let's see. I wrote something here, just something simple, just a comment. Man and woman, just like you guys. Let freedom ring, let freedom ring. The prophetic words of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. On the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, May 19, 1963. The last greatest patriot this country has seen since Abraham Lincoln. Only 57 years ago, just by his words and by his life, he shaped the last century and the beginning of this century. His cry for freedom still rings in all the hearts of the common men and women in this country. He had a dream. Today his dream has come true. That is something we must celebrate. But while we have made progress with the issue of the color of our skin, we have allowed the powers that be to take our rights in other ways. In a time where information and connectivity are at an all-time high, our freedom of speech has been censored the most it has ever been in the history of America. By a click of a button, your voice may no longer exist anymore on the internet. If these big social media CEOs don't think your narrative fits the agenda of the controlled news media platform, they have the power in the palm of their hands to end you politically. Where is the freedom of speech? How long are we, the common people of this state, going to allow the censorship to exist? If any American citizen has a concern about the state of our country, they have the freedom of speech to express it, even if it is a minority perspective. This is why we are free in this country. Once you take away the First and the Second Amendment, this country will sadly fall. Right now, in this year of 2020, our amendment rights are under attack, and now is the time we, the people, stand up and take back what is ours. How do we do that? We do this. We rally and express our freedoms. We don't sit back and pine away. We come together as the people of America, of all races and creed. And again, I quote the words of Martin Luther King Jr. When it shines out the clear, we'll all be saying, free at last, free at last.
let such a small group of people intimidate and manipulate the masses with fear tactics, where has the fight gone in Americans? We are a people who will not be ruled. We do not walk within the boundaries set forth by tyrants. We will not give up our rights and freedoms for false senses of security. We do not ask for permission. Stand up and stand together. Resist the unconstitutional regulations. If you have your own businesses or your own churches, open them up. Open your businesses and open your churches. I'm going to repeat what um, another person at a rally in Texas said. We don't ask for that permission. We open it up. Those are our businesses. It is, it is nobody's in, uh, nobody's right to tell anyone who is essential and who is not. Uh, and that clearly doesn't make sense you, when you all look at the taxes being put on your businesses. Clearly, that's essential to them. Go out and live freely. Attend church services. I say that this is a time for mass civil disobedience. Because the more people who obey and let authoritarians get away with the more, sorry, the more people let them authoritarians get away with, the more they will take until we are living in the fourth Reich. This government is supposed to be controlled by its people. When they step out of line, it is our duty to put them in check. With law enforcement openly serving as pawns, carrying out draconian rule and acting as the fist for fascists, the importance for statewide militia is very serious and relevant. The need for it today is as crucial as it was in 1775. The system we are living in today no longer represents its people. I believe the time to assemble a strong, established, united resistance is now. All over the country, people are rallying to protest tyrannical moves being made by our own government. These people are taking action to raise awareness of, total, of a totalitarian takeover trying to undermine this nation and seal a grip on the people. Also happening across the country, militias are mustering to push back the hands of an overreaching government. Even throughout Virginia, there are musters happening in various counties. In a couple of online militia groups I am in, I saw people asking, where is Chesapeake's muster, or where is Hampton Roads muster? I myself asked the question a couple times um, about any, any, anything being organized in my area. I soon came to a point of realization in urgency. I decided I was no longer going to wait for somebody else do something, I decided I would step up. I made some connections through some online militia groups, found some people in my area, and began stirring up some ideas for putting something together for the Tidewater region, which I want to thank um, Coast and Drew Varner um, for helping share some, uh, some ideas and doing something like this, and definitely thank videographer Barry and Andrew for, for coming to push out this information uh, to more people. The idea of a state militia has been painted as an extremist terrorist group in modern mainstream media. Something of radical gun-toting and unstable hoodlums seeking violence. How do we let something that used to be a standard across the United States come to this? It is my hope that we become familiar amongst each other and unite. Some people here are already in their own militia groups. A lot don't even know the others exist. I encourage everyone here to network, socialize with the people around you, get to know your fellow man, exchange information, and make new contacts. In times like this, we need people who are willing and able to defend have our backs. Um, a couple of you already filled out some forms we have. It's a militia roster form, which is just um, asking for what what uh, special.
skills or maybe resources you may have to offer. Um, it's, it's not that information is not you know going anywhere else. It is only for connecting people. Um, and someone here should have passed out question COVID-19 sheets. Uh, hopefully everyone got something like that. Cool. And I also want to share, there's there's uh, an activist group specifically called the Activist Plug. It is, uh, it's run by a YouTuber called Cory Man X, and it operates through the app Discord. I highly recommend being a part of that. It is a worldwide connection to others involved in the front lines of freedom movements. It contains chat rooms specific to states. There you can find new activist events happening near you. People also share some great content in, um, in the different sections in there, like informative pamphlets, posters, and other things you can download and print. Because it's all about putting the, the truth out there um, to all means, all platforms. Uh, I will be sure to have links sent to you when I get your roster forms back. And I, I, wanted, I want to offer this microphone to anyone who wants to say anything. This is the people's microphone. If anyone feels led to say anything, you are welcome to come up and take turns. Like I said, I'm nobody special. This is this is for everybody's voice. So anybody anybody feel the need to? I'd like to speak to I don't think I'll leave the mic. We've got a right, he doesn't need the mic. Here today. <laughs> How you Once again, I'm, my name is Joel Cotton, and uh, one of my issues today that I wanted to bring to your attention that a lot of us that you may not be aware. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, and most everybody here gets it. But the long and the short of it, television is a weapon. It's the greatest weapon ever created. And right now, it has all our fellow American, uh, the entire world is scared at home of the flu. And what we have is called HR 5736. It was passed in 2012. This allows the federal government to use psychological operations such as fake news, fake websites, fake banking, fake financial records. It's allowed to be used against the American people. The money garnered by the, uh, the, the, the news corporations pay these uh, people for their rights. You look up the uh, how this works, the money, they use that money to hire big, powerful, uh, the, the, the corporations have attorneys, these big panel rows full of 10 attorneys, and they keep us all at bay with this money. The long and the short of it is the Smith Monk Modernization Act of 2012 is the one that they're using against us. I know it's not going to help most people at home that are scared to explain this to them. They have a law that allows the federal government to lie to you. If we are protected by it. They were not allowed to do it, excuse me, up till 2012. But the last eight years, fake news, all lies, has been portrayed to the American public and you see the result of it today. The fruit of it, the entire world is shut down because of television and psychological operations, and that's the long and the short of it. H.R. 5736, 112th Congress, 2012. Check it out. That's all i got for you. Operation I don't know that one, but I'll That was, that was the CIA. Was it? The regulation pretty much the same thing. They have the right to, to push out on This, this is in law writing. You can look it up at .gov. It's legal to lie to you, and they're using our tax money to protect themselves from us. Well, is there any effort to uh, overturn that or to get, to get rid of that? I know of none. I don't even know if enough people know it exists or understand it well enough to, to do anything about it. But, uh, well, they came out of the House, so we can contact our Another thing that's out there that not, not a lot of people know about is the case law of Jacobson versus Massachusetts, uh, 197, 197 U.S. Uh, 11, passed in 1905. It is, it is virtually a law that says that the government has the obligation or the right to go into your house. Take you to a doctor's office and force vaccination. Not at all. Yeah. So people 
people are of the opinion that they're trying to try to mandate a, a vaccination. However, they already pretty much have the tools to say, okay, it's all right. We can do this. It doesn't matter. Uh, but in my opinion, like, I mean, granted, when I go down my rabbit hole worth of uh, thought and research, I, I do get down there sometimes into like the extreme conspiracy type thing. But uh, it's not looking good. <laughs> it's not looking good one way or another. If it's conspiracy or if it's back, let it just uh, direct from where we're going. It's, it's not looking good. And I'm of the opinion that we, we all really need to stand up, be Americans again, and just stand up for what's right. Absolutely. Yes, sir. just mentioned, um, standing up is crucial now, and a lot of the things that are going on seem a bit extreme, but once you realize the nature of grandfathered consent, it's not that extreme. After the World War II, we had a great economic period that was brought about by the interstate highway system. Um, the interstate highway system was great for America, great for the United States, but that was the end of states' rights. As soon as we had a highway between my state and your state, now D.C. had influence on what we did in both of our states. Um, because of that, we moved into an era, an era where policies mattered more than people and corporations mattered more than citizens because our leadership didn't see any more citizens. If an alien or an anthropologist were to come here 300 years ago, they'd see a group of people who didn't own anything, who didn't live in different states, who weren't allowed to have passports. Those people were called slaves. Now your average American who calls themselves a citizen, they may not have economically be in a position to own property or to have lived in different states, but they do have the power to have a passport. And without a passport, you cannot consent, you don't consent to be here or to be anywhere else. And I would present to you that our leaders are people with passports. And when they look at us without passports, they say, wow, they don't even care. The closest thing to somebody with a passport who does care is the corporation which can house itself, relocate, restructure, and do the things that they do. So I encourage everybody to get passports. I say plural passports because in the last three years, our passport has lost 50% of its value. Um, for decades, when I started traveling in the 90s, you could show up anywhere in the world with a blue book and be good for three months because of the promise of reciprocity and the economic advantages that we offered. Since we've restricted some of that, now when you show up, you don't get to stay for three months automatically. And most places require you to get a visa ahead of time. So right now, if I took everybody on a cruise to three countries in the next week, very few of us could actually secure visas. Even living this close to DC and paying extra hundreds of dollars for expedited service, you need multiple passports to travel to multiple locations to get visas now. Um, you need multiple passports now to visit different countries that may not be friends with each other. If you go to um, Jerusalem on one passport, you probably don't want to go to Jordan on that one. Um, we, we live in a different world that way. So a lot of the stuff seems monumental, like that first step isn't very clear, but I encourage everybody to get a passport. Drop that money for the price of a pair of shoes. That's not why I'm barefoot, but you, you, can, think, you, can, you can think of it that way. Get, get your two passports. There's standard 10-year passport, and there's also a temporary four-year passport, like I said, to get those visas and stuff. And then once you have a passport, as an American, you can say you consent to be here. As an American, you say, I'm here because I want to be. And if you don't like the situation here, you can live in most of the world where people live on a dollar a day. And I'll tell you, 10 American dollars in those places makes you live very well. Maybe you leave this behind. But if you do stay, stay here and choose to stay here, you have something in common with our leaders. You have a passport, and you could go somewhere else. Because our leaders make the decisions that reflect they could, are willing to, probably going to, go somewhere else. They don't have to be here. They know we are, and they perceive most of us as just non non-active in our citizenship. Thank you. That's true. All people, right now. And, uh, anybody else? Anybody else want to use the mic? Turn it off. Yes, I'm going to help out. Anybody else? Reflect. Well, let's give ourselves a round of applause.